One of the greater points of contention regarding the authenticity of the new Aberdeen tapes is the Lake Orr monster, also known as Orion. The presence of this creature in the recordings is one of the strangest aspects of the overall mystery. All descriptions of Orion provided in the recordings paint a peculiar image. He is reptilian and described as looking prehistoric, though his features do not conform to any known species of marine reptile. His neck is long in proportion to his body without being especially serpentine. His head is distinctly crocodilian, he has webbed hands and feet rather than flippers, and a sinewy tail. Even amidst other aquatic cryptids, Orion's physiognomy is distinct. Skeptics have said that Orion is nothing more than a hoax meant to capitalize on sightings of the Loch Ness Monster, a cryptid which first came to prominence in 1933. They note the convenient timing of Orion's first appearance, the fact that most sightings occurred at specific venues on the lake, and the odd coincidence that New Aberdeen itself is named after a Scottish town. Believers counter these arguments by noting that the coincidence of the city's name is precisely that, and most sightings occurred at the Golden Skies Nudist Resort because it was one of only two establishments on the lake shore open to the public, the other being a beachfront located in the New Aberdeen National Park. They also note how the tapes never draw comparisons between Orion and Nessie, a popular practice when discussing lake monsters even today, and that the first tape in the series mentions how 13 years have passed since the end of World War I. This, if accurate, would place the first sightings of Orion between 1931 and 1932, well before the first modern Nessie sightings in 1933, meaning the creature could not have been made up specifically to capitalize on the Loch Ness phenomenon. It is unfortunate that, despite references made in the recordings, no photographs of Orion have been recovered as yet. The lake itself is completely contained within the Q-Zone, as are all of its estuaries, making it as inaccessible as the rest of the region. Currently, the only evidence accrued on the lake or monster can be found within the tapes, which include audio recordings of what seems to be a large creature. Analysts who have studied the sound have found no match with any known animal species, but most remain hesitant to identify the source as a genuine monster. At present, the sound remains anomalous. It is a popular theory among New Aberdeen investigators that Orion, if he exists, played a significant role in events which led to the city being quarantined. As the tapes are still in the process of being remastered, this question remains open for the moment. The following recording is an atypical broadcast for the Victor Jones Radio Hour, as it occurred on the Sunday following the previous broadcast, a gap of only two days. The reasons for this upset in the schedule are explained at the start of the program. It, as well, contains several auditory anomalies. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's broadcast of The Adventures of Adam Astro Space Explorer has been delayed until next week. Instead, the New Aberdeen Radio Network brings you a Victor Jones Radio Hour exclusive report. Adam Astro will return in his next thrilling adventure, Planet of the Fragminions, one week from today. We now take you to our special report. One last adjustment, Dan. We're on! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a special broadcast of the Victor Jones Radio Hour, brought to you by... well, myself, I suppose. In light of the class action lawsuit against Oyster Brand filed over the weekend, the new Aberdeen Radio Network has cut ties with the company and all funding has been pulled. The station managers have several leads on potential new sponsors, but at the moment, we're what you might call independent. But never fear, Vic Jones doesn't let such inconveniences as tight purse strings stop him from getting his story. In fact, I'm not even in the studio for tonight's special program. We are currently set up in an undisclosed location to bring you breaking news about the anomalies which have been affecting our fair city. I can't tell you where we are, folks, but the setting is the stuff of film noir. There's a lot of cloak and dagger workings at play tonight, as my guest wishes that every precaution be taken so as to prevent- Victor? Is that you? Hope? You have got to be kidding me. What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. Well, I'm certainly not out for a casual evening stroll in this abysmal part of town. Unlike you, I go where the stories are. You're just jealous because I have a nice cozy studio. Besides, your insult is off base this time since I'm also here for a story. I'm broadcasting as we speak. Well, you and whoever called you will just have to pack up and relocate. 
Not after setting up all this equipment, I won't. This stuff ain't easy to move. All you've got is a pad and paper, so why don't you make tracks instead? Please, please, there's no need for bickering. Oh, oh there, there you, you are. are. Wait just a minute here. Did you call us both at once? I think he did. So this is how it feels to be double booked. No kidding. I haven't really been wronged, but I still feel slighted. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. No slight was intended, I promise you. Uh, I understand your confusion, but I asked you both to come here for a reason. I have vital information to impart which must be made known to the public, and I'm entrusting it to both of you because you are the best reporters in New Aberdeen. I you don't know. Believe me, you don't want to tell her anything. She'd sell her own granny for a scoop. Uh, will you two please put your differences aside for long enough to listen? The future of the entire city is at stake, and if you'll pardon my frankness, that matters slightly more than your petty rivalry. I ask you both here to ensure that this reaches the entire city. Anyone who doesn't hear Mr. Jones's program will read about it in Miss G's paper, and vice versa. Now please be content with sharing just this once for the sake of the people! New Aberdeen is really in danger? I'm afraid so. It's urgent. Very. Uh, I suppose I can put up with Victor for tonight. Hope already hijacked my show once. What's one more time in the big picture? Listen, if you refuse to cooperate, I will find some alternate means of spreading the word. No, don't go! Yeah, we'll behave. We'll even shake hands on it. Truce, Vic? Truce, Hope. Oh, good grief. Your hands are clammy. At least they're not ice cubes like yours. See? No more animosity. You can stay and give us both that big scoop. Well, all right. I'm glad you both realize the gravity of the situation. Then let's make like a burglar at a safe and get cracking. Joining us tonight, folks, is our special guest. Actually, you haven't given me your name yet. Me neither. Though, with all the secrecy, I assume he'd want some sort of alias? There's no time for secrets any longer. The only reason we're in a secluded place is to ensure we aren't interrupted. But beyond that, it's time to come clean. My name is Dr. Gilbert Goldstein. I am a scientist at Cobalt Labs, and I know the truth. The truth about what? Orion? Orion, the Valorum skyscraper, and much, much more. We at Cobalt have been monitoring events in New Aberdeen for some time, and I'm the only one willing to reveal our findings to the public. We have much to discuss before the night is through. In that case, let's start at the beginning, wherever that may be. It all begins in Lake Orr itself. As with most lakes in the northern hemisphere of the planet, Lake Orr was carved out by receding glaciers of the Ice Age. Yet it is especially rich in mineral deposits, more than any other body of water in the world. This is where the name Lake Orr comes from. You understand, because it is rich in mineral ore. I see. What kind of minerals? Uh, every kind known to man, and many we have yet to classify, including the new element which caused the explosion a few weeks ago. That's the same stuff Hugh Valorum is building that skyscraper of his with, right? The very same. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. You see, people have always had a passing knowledge about the mineral deposits, but they were mostly interested in the precious metals such as gold and silver, which is part of the reason, of course, why this area was settled in the first place. It was thought that if there were so many minerals in the lake, maybe they were in the land around it as well. Sure, but that didn't turn out to be the case. The new Aberdeen Gold Rush of 1899 only lasted two months because it hardly turned up anything underground. Uh, correct. The minerals are here, but they are all concentrated in the lake bed. We still have yet to discern why, but that is the way it is. Uh, now, three years ago is when the proverbial snowball began rolling downhill. Hugh Valorum came to Cobalt Labs after learning that we had used our submersibles to extract samples from the lake bed and, in doing so, discovered a new element. Sorry to interrupt, Doc, but does this new element have a name? We have yet to agree on one. Uh, Mr. Valorum wants us to call it Valoramite, but I doubt he will want his name attached to it for very long. Anyway, th the name is not important. He learned about the discovery through an article in New Aberdeen Daily, and he commissioned us to find a way of mining it for him so he could build his skyscraper. 
It was such an incredible sum he offered that the board could not refuse it. We developed a system and began mining. Uh, most of the material went straight to Mr. Valorum, but he allowed us to keep some for continued research. <laughs> really, I believe he only allowed that in hopes that we could find a way that he could further exploit it for himself. Whatever the case, he began construction immediately. And based on everything you've told us about this substance so far, that was a mistake. Oh, indeed. The skyscraper has been irradiated ever since it was struck by lightning, and we've since discovered that it is explosive when mixed with the wrong elements. That would make the Valorum skyscraper dangerous enough, but I'm afraid even more is afoot. What else could there possibly be? Orion is what else, madam. He too is closely linked to all of this. Hold the phone. Are you saying that Orion, the Lake Gore monster, is real? Actually real? He is as real as anything can be. We all heard his cries on Friday night. Then why haven't we seen him before? Yeah, that's a good question. People have been going to the lake for decades without seeing anything. Even the old native legends only make vague mentions of a spirit in the lake. But that's a far cry from a monster. Hey, maybe he's also an experiment. Some man-made monster escaped from the lab. <sighs> that is the dumbest... Huh, wait a minute. That would actually make sense. Please, please, be patient. I will explain, but we must go through things in the proper order. Orion is not an artificial creature. He is a natural part of the lake's ecosystem, though we have not confirmed if he is truly as prehistoric as he appears. I've seen him for myself, Doc, and he sure looks like a dinosaur to me. I understand that, but he does not match up with anything in the fossil record. He might be an ancient species, or he might be a more recent species. We just don't know at this point. Regardless of what Orion might be, there is a reason why nobody has seen him until recently. You'll see he- What the- That sounded like gunfire. My word. They actually went that far. Everybody hit the dice! Get down! You are listening to the New Aberdeen Radio Network. We seem to be experiencing some issues with our broadcast. Our technicians are currently attempting to re-establish contact with Victor Jones. Please enjoy this musical interlude until the broadcast resumes. Hold it. I think it's working. Is the red light on? Uh, yeah, it's on. Then we're back. Sorry for the interruption, folks. There was commotion outside, and a stray bullet knocked us off the air for a moment. It seems to have stopped now. As far as we've been able to see, there's nobody outside this old warehouse anymore, so we appear to be safe for the moment. Dr. Goldstein, you said something before things got hairy that tells me that you know something about our impromptu visitors. Care to explain? I almost can't believe it myself, but the evidence is compelling. You see, there have been rumblings that some of my colleagues may have ties with the Magliori family, who also have an interest in the new element's potential uses. Naturally, they wouldn't want me telling you any of this either. I suspect this is an attempted uh, hit. It was sloppy, if that's what it was. Why wouldn't the shooters have come in and made sure they got us? Someone must have stopped them. And there are only two people in this crazy town I can think of who could. My money's on the Enigma. It must have been. If Smoke had been here, he would have checked on... Er... Uh... Checked on what, Hope? Or should I say, who? I mean, he, uh... He would have just left the bodies. That's his style, right? Kill the bad guys and leave? Uh, stop looking at me like that, you two! Well, the important thing is that we're not currently in danger, so let's pick up where we left off. Doc, I believe you were about to explain a few things concerning Orion. Specifically, why haven't we seen him before? Hmm? Oh, yes. Uh, I remember. It's quite unusual, really. Uh, Orion is only appearing now because we disturbed him. How do you mean, disturbed? 
Orion is not like other life forms, Miss She. While he does require food to survive, my own observations point to him being omnivorous. His primary sustenance comes from the minerals in the lake bed, particularly the substance Mr. Valorum commissioned us to retrieve for him. Uh, since he does most of his eating at the bottom of the lake, and he has the ability to breathe underwater, he simply never had a reason to surface before. But then you science types started your mining operation. Precisely. We are intruding upon an ecosystem and interfering with the apex life form's primary food supply. Orion no doubt sees us as competition. He comes to the surface now because he knows that's where we come from. Which means he's patrolling, searching for us, making sure we stay out of his home. Furthermore, his appearances near populated sections of the lakeshore are intimidation displays, which indicates that he recognizes we are controlling the watercraft. That seems awfully smart for a lizard, Doc. I admit, there is some debate among us as to how intelligent Orion actually is. At the very least, he can understand connections between objects. That alone makes him incredibly dangerous. But how dangerous is he, really? At this point, he hasn't killed anyone. Or has he? I'm afraid he has, Miss She. Some time ago, Mr. Jones read a leaked document from the lab about one of our research vessels, which I can confirm was attacked by Orion. There were casualties. Only two, and as an indirect result of damage to the ship. But casualties are casualties. But the pattern so far is that he only attacks when people encroach on his territory. The same as any animal would do. Wouldn't a lack of activity on the lake solve the problem? The Commissioner already put up a quarantine, so if we could pressure Cobalt and Valorum to stop mining on the lake bed, that should take care of it, right? <laughs> Would that it was so simple. I'm afraid our actions may have already sealed New Aberdeen's fate. For heaven's sake, not again! Gilbert, get down! Ugh. This way! Stay low! We should be safe behind this wall. For the moment, at least. Good thing I found this hiding spot. Guess that makes me the hero. Um, excuse me? I'm the one who saved the dock. That bullet had his name on it. For goodness sake, you two are really still bickering in the face of certain death? Honestly, putting you two in the same room is akin to mixing potassium chlorate and red phosphorus. Uh-huh. So, you know, neither one of us knows what that means, right? Well, it's a chemical mixture that's highly reactive, generally used in the... <laughs> Never mind! I'll explain later! Is it over? Are we dead? My heart is beating too rapidly for that to be the case. I knew it! I knew he'd be here! Who's here? Hey, where are you running off to? I just need to see something. I'll be right back. But there was gunfire, Miss G. Not anymore, there's not. Don't worry. If I'm right, I won't be in any danger. Victor, don't ask Dr. Goldstein anything important while I'm gone, or I'll tweak your nose clean off your face. What manner of woman is it who runs toward her would-be killers rather than away from them? The hungry reporter kind. She would have camped in the heart of Gallipoli for a chance to interview both the English and the Turks. Most unusual. Anyway, as I was saying before I'd we- I'd love to hear it, Doc, believe me, but Hope is also the kind of woman who doesn't make threats of physical violence in jest. I happen to like my nose where it is, so we'll wait a few minutes. So, you have been following the women's wrestling league tournaments? That Latina eagle sure is full of spit and vinegar in the ring, ain't she? I don't really take much of an interest in sporting events. Oh. Well, uh, how about that Commissioner Rodsworth? Think he'll have any luck weeding out those doity cops? I suppose he will have some degree of success. Read any good books lately? All right, everyone, we're safe again! Hope! Thank the Lord you're back! Was it the Enigma again? Actually, this time it was Smoke. Some more hitmen showed up, but he gassed him good. Goodness me. 
They really are determined, aren't they? I am terribly sorry about all this. It's all right now, Doc. Smoke told me he'd make sure no one else is lurking around. He spoke to you? Why would he do that? Smoke hasn't spoken to anyone as far as I'm aware. No reason. You answered that far too quickly. What are you hiding? Let's not ignore our guest, Vic. That would be rude. Oh, no. If anything, I feel the fault must lie with me for putting you both in such dangerous circumstances. Applesauce, Doc. Yeah, we're reporters. We're used to a little danger. Especially those of us who don't spend our nights cooped up in a studio. There's that jealousy again. Before you become too entrenched in your rivalry once more, may I continue? This is the most important information of all, and it must be heard before something else interrupts us. Okay, okay. What's the scoop? The scoop, Mr. Jones, is destruction the likes of which New Aberdeen has never seen before. Ideally, Miss G's proposal to simply abandon all prospects on Lake Orr would be enough to avoid a crisis, but it's too late for that. As I said, Orion feeds on the very element which we have extracted from the lake. With his primary food source being depleted, he will inevitably seek more of it beyond the lake. Where else would he find... Wait a minute. No! Not the skyscraper! Precisely that, Mr. Jones. The Lorem skyscraper is made out of the stuff Orion eats! And it's practically in the heart of New Aberdeen! If Orion comes ashore, I can't even imagine what might happen! You will not need to imagine it, Miss Shee. Orion's landfall is inevitable. That roar we heard during Mr. Jones' show last Friday was not random. It was a warning. And I fear it may be our only one. Give it to us straight, Doc. How long have we got? Days. Is there anything we can do to prevent it? (sighs) <sighs> Short of tearing down Valorum's skyscraper and dumping the remains in Lake Orr, no. There's no way Hugh Valorum would approve that anyway. As much as I hate to bring it up, what about killing Orion? It'd be a shame, but if it prevents a disaster... <sighs> I'm afraid Orion's diet precludes that. Consumption of the new element has made his hide especially durable. Not even our police zeppelins have enough firepower to make him bleed, and based on our observations of his eating habits, his immune system can filter out most poisons. At the moment, we have no way to kill him. And as a scientist, I'm loath to do so anyway. He's such a fascinating creature, even if we have made him a threat to us. So, what can we do? Evacuate. We must have a way to get people out of New Aberdeen and to a sanctuary of some manner before Orion makes landfall, and keep them there until he returns to the water. Evacuate New Aberdeen? Can that even be done? There's 800,000 people here! And on such short notice, too. We have no choice. When Orion comes ashore, the f- Correct frequency? I- Make sure they much already. Should be it. Transmission now! You are listening to the New Aberdeen Radio Network. We seem to have lost contact with Victor Jones and his guests and are unable to restore the connection. On behalf of the management, we apologize for these unforeseen technical difficulties. I have just been asked to read a statement from the representatives of Cobalt Labs. Quote, Dr. Gilbert Goldstein is a respected colleague and member of the Cobalt Labs team. However, his statements regarding anomalies in and around Lake Orr are theoretical, sensational, and have yet to be verified by peer review. At this time, we wish to assure the people of New Aberdeen that all phenomena in Lake Orr are being investigated, and there is currently no hard evidence of any threat posed to the city. End quote. This concludes our special transmission of the Victor Jones Radio Hour. Victor Jones will return to his regularly scheduled time slot this Friday, and Adam Astro will return next Sunday. Please stay tuned for our next broadcast, Bernie's Big Band Bonanza, starting now. The New Aberdeen Tapes, Episode 6, Secrets of the Lake Ore Monster, written and directed by Ryan Collins.
Title card image by Snazzy Chapeau. Featuring, in order of appearance, Rodney Woodworth as the new Aberdeen radio announcer, Ryan Collins as Victor Jones, Pink Bunny Girl 43 as Hope G, Sean Hastings as Dr. Gilbert Goldstein, as Mysterious Voice 1, as Mysterious Voice 2, Featured music, Swing Theory, by Freedom Trail Studio. Sponsored by patrons Gordhan Rajani, Gonjelian, Mark Davies, Matthew Hall, Ramus, Tarbtano, The Fragminion, and Thomas Nickel. Thank you for listening, and good night.